we're going to retrieve data from the database in this example. We know how to connect. We're going to actually fill up a generic table here, HTML table with data. I'll explain how that works. We'll get more into details as we move forward. We don't have a header here at the top and we don't let you know what fields are which. And we also return things like null, for example. And we can actually do some more advanced things in the future. In different examples, this is just showing you the basic structure of actually selecting data, putting it into the HTML file, but also looking at the database side. We'll look at PHP MyAdmin and perform some queries as well from there. If we look at the file, retrieving data, we can see that we start off the same way, connecting to the server and the database. Samples is, is the database. Make sure you know that the username and password are added right here instead of using the variables like we did in the previous example. And then we're going to perform what is called a select statement. It's a string that we pass to the database once we connect and we can retrieve results. We can retrieve one line or multiple lines and it depends on what we're trying to do. In this case we have multiple lines as you can see here just retrieving data. Now we can look at PHP my admin and see how things look a little bit different but this is actually going to put a table together and I'll explain this this is going to be dynamic HTML but not necessarily DHTML in that sense of creating things that are going to be moving around our screens in the browser or positioned nicely in the browser or absolutely and fitting the new end dynamic HTML DHTML this is dynamic in the sense that we're creating it on the fly in PHP so a little bit of the same name but a little bit of a different feature there server side to client side dynamic HTML and you can see that we just basically what we do is we have our result come back from that query once it's sent I'll explain this select statement as well the queries passed in here MySQL query is going to be the function the result is going to be all the data that actually is going to fit from this table so select all the fields that's what select star does from table users we don't put any other conditions on it to limit the data so we're actually going to bring back the whole table we'll look at ways of looking at different pages and things like that as we move through the training as well everything's going to be listed here depending on what you have in the database now when we get the result we're going to have to continue to work with that as we move down here using a while loop here we're going to fetch this information as an array mysql fetch array and what this does is it fetches the data from this result because this result is actually going to be our data this is going to fetch it as an array it's pretty much converted into an array and mysql underscore associ this is going to actually bring back the key value pairs as we're used to with arrays as opposed to just the numeric elements you can change this to num for num and then you can actually just get the indices the elements there in the array you can play with that and also look at the documentation for this particular command there are also a ton of functions that you can use with mysql we'll explore what we can within the training but MySQL is really in-depth. MySQL can be very complex, but at the same time, it can also be easy to use. And with PHP as well, you have that same type of, it can be hard or it can be easy. And there are a lot of functions that you can use. So you do want to actually take a look at the MySQL documentation as well as the PHP MySQL documentation for more information. But this is how it would work. In this particular case, use NUM if you just want those numeric indices and that can help if you're doing a for each or for loop in a different way but we have a while loop and we're used to having this type of syntax already and you can see that the while loop is going to go for each row there and it's line in this particular example but it's a row and then we're going to go and find the column values here and this is going to bring back this as an array so this is actually going to be a multi-dimensional array that's returned and we're going to look at each array within the array. So this is an array of columns and then all together an array of rows on the outside. And you can see that represented when we look here. This is a row here, which is an array of columns, but another array is each row. So an object within another object there. That's how you would look at that. 
So we have that, and that for each, like we've seen before, is just going to echo out a TD with a couple of tabs here. We know this from escaping strings, and it's just going to put the column value right in this particular TD. And it's going to wrap that outside of that first for each, it's going to wrap it in a table row, and that's going to allow us to create the row. And that just loops for all the data. We'll see this again, so just let that settle in. It's just an easy way to work. Not necessarily so complicated based on all the things we've learned so far, so it's really not so complicated. Now we also want to have the count there, so we have a counter which was initialized to zero up at the top, and then we just increment it by one for each line, and then if the count is less than one, we're just going to echo out. We don't have any rows here, but if there are rows there, then we're actually going to see what those rows are as far as the count is concerned. And like I said, you can use MySQL free results if you want to. You can look up the documentation on that. This is helpful to do that, to free up the resources. And MySQL close will also free up the resources, but you don't necessarily have to do both of these anymore. It's really up to the situation that you're working in based on your server and what the recommendations are that you do. But for the most part, you can just eliminate these two now because PHP, the engine, can pretty much handle that. But that's up to you in the type of environment, mission critical, large servers, large databases, how many users, things like that. But for the most part, you can actually eliminate those two. And that's how we would connect. But the one thing we need to worry about is the SQL statement. We'll look at PHP my admin and see how that's going to play a part in this. And you know that the data is going to be returned here, and you can see that there's different data represented there. So in PHP my admin, we're just looking at the table users here. We selected the samples database, table users. It's presented here, and we can actually browse the data and see that we have a similar selection here. We're using limit to, limit 0, 30 to limit this to just 30 rows. And then if there were more rows, we could actually go to the next set of rows if we wanted to. But you can make changes here and do all kinds of things. And that select statement is on different lines here for the different parts. You select star, which means select all the columns. You select from that table users, and then you limit it to a set of rows. And we'll look at that again. But you can edit the SQL, and you can actually make a change here. And you don't necessarily have to use star to bring back everything. You could just bring back fields that you actually want to work with. So you can multi-select here. If you press the go, as you can see, you can see that this is not going to have any selections here. And that's not necessarily what you want to do. So what you can do is you have to actually hit this arrow here. We'll select right here hit the arrow, and now this puts those fields here. Instead of that asterisk, we're actually editing the SQL. And it's a nice feature for this particular environment with the PHP admin. It lets you learn a lot, plus the code itself is written in PHP, so you can actually take a look at it. It's open source. So now we can hit go, and there are other things you can do. And then you see that the select query here is actually changed, and we're selecting a limited set of data, limited columns, and the rows returned are going to be all the rows, but up to 30, from 0 to 30. Limit that. Now, you don't necessarily need these little squiggly kind of quote signs here. You don't need that in the actual code, but it's put in there for formal SQL. But you notice we didn't have anything like that in our SQL. It's up to you. It's up to how things are set up on your particular server. So you either need them or you don't, but most times you don't need them. And in PHP My Admin, they are added, just to let you know that. Microsoft SQL Server also has different commands there as well, and different ways of actually having the SQL work. It depends on the compliance of the SQL and things like that. SQL has a compliance just like HTML has a compliance, and all the other things like XML ha have compliance, and ECMAScript, things like that. So even SQL has a set of standards that you can and you should adhere to but sometimes backwards compatibility is allowed or just the more openness so things don't have to be so strict and cause us all a lot of headaches. But you get the idea. You can actually make different changes here, include or exclude the header, and you can even take a peek within the code, like I said, to see how this particular page works.
but that's how you can retrieve some data and select some data. And we'll look at that in more depth as we move forward.